gentlemen, first of all, let me thank you for your coming here today. As you probably know, we are a second year student in English education major at the Sesan University. These are members of the group. Let us introduce ourselves. First, my name is Chen Jira Sam Khan Ying, and the next one is Ms. Kun Ki Dawan. And then I will move on to Ms. Nea Da Bung And the last special one is Mr. Takri Lobi. As we are Thai people who live in Thailand, which is an amazing country, we, our home is, have wonderful culture, tradition, and festival. As you see on the slide, you will see Thai traditional cultures such as a beautiful temple that's called Wat Arun Rajwara Ram Raja Waramahamihan. And then you will see the old Thai traditional performing arts, it's called Kho. Including to some grand festival and larger home festival and Thai traditional cultures too. And today we are here to present about a wonderful festival in Isan or, or Southeast Thailand, which is about creepy ghosts, scary, scary masks, wonderful costume, parade, and merit event. After you see this picture, do you know what this festival is? Pitakon. Yes, that's right, Pitakon. So today we are thrilled to be here to talk about Pitakon and inheritance culture. And how wonderful Pitakon. And how to preserve Pitakon for Thai people as long as it takes. So this slide is show about the purpose of our topics today. After you listen to us, you will get the benefit in four parts. The first one is background of Pita Kon. Second is folklore and class of Pita Kon. Then Pita Kon festival days and how is it celebrated. And the last one is inheritance culture of Pita Kon. So today I am going to talk about the background of Pita Kon in two stuff. The first one is story of Prophet and Don and Namasi, and the last one is beginning of Pita Kon, located story. So, as you see on the slide, this is background of Pita Kon, and I'm here today to describe what is Pita Kon Festival. So, Pita Kon Festival is a combination of mass, old tradition, and ghost body that everyone know as is a ghost. Baseball. This information, according to the official website Thailand now, gave the information to us. And this slide is part of the story of Prophet Don and Namasi. So who is there? Who is Prophet Don and Namasi? Is a married couple. They were banished from the palace by the king, who is a father of Pita, of, of Prophet Don. So. Prophet and Don, because Prophet and Don gave a precious elephant to another city without permission. And they go to live in the forest, but not long time. The king called them back to the palace. And you know what? The incredible things happened. Many animals and ghosts followed them to the palace. And the situation is called Pitam Kon, or ghost following people. And his name is became Pita Kon as his name. So this slide should have the last part of background of Pita Kon. I'll be talking about the beginning of Pita Kon look test story. As you see on the slide, this is a picture of Bun Luang or Bun Pawe. It's a merit event of Pita Kon festival. It takes place in Pratasi Sora at Bada Sai district, Loi province. So as you see on this slide, Pita Kon Festival is a signature in Loi province and it became a famous in Isan and in Thailand as everyone knows. So these are all the background of Pita Kon. I will give the stage to Ms. Kun Tidawandi to give you an interesting information more. Thank you, Ms. Tendula. Okay, so that after we know the history of Pita Kon. The history of Pita Kon is wonderful and charming. So, in this topic, I want to show you about the folklore and the cast of Pita Kon. In this topic, I will show you about belief and fake to people, snakes, two castes, and belief. Did you know how 
properly perfect two people? No. Okay? Let's start in the show really perfect two people. <laughs> The local people pay the spirit, the spirit of the ancestor who have died, and and they and they must to do this tradition because if they don't have this tradition, it must uh, get sick or get bad thing in their life. Okay, as you can see in the slide, I will show you between different of. Tafonya and Tafole. First, the side of them, Tafonya is bigger than Tafole, and it has two members. It's called Puyuliaya. They live by the family. It's all by the ghost or holy holy. And and if and this battle, it must be done every year. If don't if they don't done every year, it's must get the bad thing or get the problem in their life or their family. But in, in this Kita Polek, when the ceremony is complete, they must throw they must throw the they must throw the costing to the month river because they believe to leave the the bad thing or some something that they 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 pull up. However, believe it's important for local people because that means to bind people much together. Okay, I am um, to expand again. The, the different thing of them. This is Pita Konya and this is Pita Polek. First, the side of them, Pita Konya is bigger than Pita Polek. And next, the amount of them, Pita Konya is just two member, Puyo Yayo, and Pita Polek is much many member. And belief may not be going to for just a little time, it is itself in the group of society. And now I'm um, moving to the to Miss Nereda to give you more information of Pita Phone Festival. Thank you for giving me a stay, Miss Lachida. As you can see on the slide, we are still on the topic Pita Phone Festival and inheritance culture. As you know the story of Pita Phone from a long time ago, which is the most which is the most fun celebration in Thailand. Today, I would like to give you the purpose of Pita Kon Festival Day and how it is celebrated. Let's look at the slide. If you see in the floor chart, it will show that the detail in each slide that I want to tell you today. Now, I will tell interesting information to you. This is about, is it the day of Pita Kon? This festival was held. This, is the, this festival was was held on six month, uh, six month of from June to July, and this festival, they usually they usually do in various street of that side or everywhere in Lui. And in this year, this festival was held on twenty third to twenty fifth June two thousand twenty three. Okay, let's move on to the next slide. How it is celebrated? In this festival, they usually dress like ghosts or demon, and they also wear a large unique mask with different beautiful patterns. And then they will join in the parade and they show fun dancing through the parade. This is another signature that many people have been waiting for. Okay, the next slide show that Peter Cohn's mask must wear. Uh, must wear a mask that are paint or draw to make their face scary. And the clothes that they wear are used for mosquito netting or scrap to or scrap of clothes to suit their body. And then they will join the parade and show various gestures during Wulong tradition. It's this amazing thing that only happened in that silence. The 
last one, I will end with the important thing that you don't forget, don't forget to do after enjoying this festival. In this tradition, local people believe that who are dressed up or wear like Peter Kojai, they must take off their old clothes and throw it away. Please don't forget to throw it away and don't bring it into the house because they believe that it would bring bad luck to you. And this is the detail of Peter Kuhn, Festival Days and how it is celebrated. And now I will move to Mr. Kit to give you another purpose. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Nayada, for sharing your insight on Peter Kuhn Festival. Now we are come to the final points of uh, our presentation. Uh, I am talk about inheritance culture and Peter Kuhn Festival. As you can see this slide, how to save Peter Kuhn. I will show you this. Okay, the first is education and awareness. Next is promoting the responsible tourism. And the last one is power of social media. Okay, the first is education and awareness can keep Peter Kuhn alive. For example, school and communities can teach young people uh, about history and meaning of Peter Kuhn and to encourage young people to take a part. People, young people involved in math and costume from this way can help to preserve this art. Second is promoting responsible tourism. When visitors come, they should respect Thai tradition and understand why it's special. They may support the local economy by buying handcraft or products from a local Seller. From this way, it's not just a uh, Peter Cohen survive, but it also can help local economy. Finally, it's power of social media. It's way, uh, it is crucial to ensure and continue to the future. For example, making content creation from influencers. The next is to use government advertising media. And we can also show show on various social media platforms about Peter Cohen, like Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and others. From this way, can is all people from around the world and people in Thai to appreciate the value and beauty of Peter Cohen tradition. So, well, this brings us to the, our in the end our presentation. Before I start, let me start the main part again. There are four parts, uh, such as the first is the name, with the beginning of name Peter Kohn. Name of Peter Kohn. Uh. Next is people, believer, and class of Peter Kohn. Third is a time to celebrate this wonderful tradition. The last one, Peter Kohn is beautiful, it should have to deserve to continue to the future. Did you know what is the most important piece for Peter Kohn? Yeah, it is a cultural inheritance. Because it's very important because the ancestor create, believe, history, and ask if there is not inheritance, the wonderful tradition can fade away. And the next generation, unfortunately, miss the wonderful tradition. If you have the Opinion to retain. Let's exchange with us, and if you have some questions, feel free to ask us. Thank you for your question. It's a uh, it is combined between uh, ancient belief and Buddhism. This is show Thai cultures. Okay. Okay. Thank you for your question. Uh, I can afford to your question. I pass to Miss Jetila. Thank you for your uh, interesting question. I will answer your question. The music and Peter Kuhn Festival, in my experience, I think the drums and all traditional instruments are very interesting and it's 
very good when mixed to guitar or baseball, and it makes guitar or baseball more exciting. Thank you. What is pita and why you celebrate in Thailand? That I show you before is the information. Pita Khon is a mass procession and old tradition. It's a good festival. So Pita Khon Festival is a ghost festival, as you know, and is located in Bandar Sai in Thailand. Yeah, that's the famous festival in Thailand right now. Pita Khon changed over time. Since Pita Khon begin is a basic festival or traditional, but now it's become a famous festival that everybody in Thailand know. Okay, I will pass your, your question to Miss Nyada. Okay, and <laughs> okay, and the traditional of Pita Khon costume, right? Is it the mask? Because the mask is made from half craft coconut husk, and the and the clothes was made from uh, mosquito netting or scrap of their clothes to suit their body. And the symbol of Pita Khon is the mask again. Because is it a symbol of to get a bad thing away from their lo local people and their village? Yes. Okay, the last question. Tell me again, Pita Khon is this word from what? Okay, in this word, Pita is come from, came from Pita Khon. Yes, because in at the story that she told before, yes, in Prabhupada's and Namasi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for